I would buy butcher paper, you know, that 36 inch roll of butcher paper. And so we, we'd roll that out and, and grab some paints and brushes and just turn on the music. What I quickly realized is that I knew what looked good, but I didn't know how to create it. And my daughters provided me with the opportunity to first experiment with that. Hi. How's it going? Good. How's Chattanooga? It's good. Where are you exactly? Uh, we live in Swanee. So oh. if you love Chattanooga and headed to Nashville and you go up over the Cumberland Plateau. Yeah. Is Swanee like a campus city? I definitely wouldn't call it a city. <laughs> um, it, is, it is indeed a campus town though. Yeah. So when all the students are on campus, you know, our population at least doubles. It always reminds me of uh, Harry Potter when I go up there. I've been to the campus a couple of times. It's always foggy no matter when you go. It's a little chilly. No. It's pretty cool though. No. Yeah, but not today. No fog today. Yeah, you got some bright sun going on back there. Did you start your art career in Swanee? Um, I started, I would call it my art experience. Uh, not so much my art career, but my art experience actually began when my daughters were young. I have two daughters and it became our go-to activity as in, in terms of having time together and and when they were when they were young we would have a just a big table uh, it was like a crafts table but I would buy butcher paper and grab some paints and brushes and, and you know go for a couple hours at least so practicing that early attention span but it was really it was really wonderful when we began it was nearly 20 years ago so that my, my artistic experience, um, that's really where it began. I had no formal training and it was really a bit of, of, of a discovery for me. Very cool. And do you do sculpture as well as 2D? I do. I do. I, I started painting um, uh, using oil, oil paints and then now I primarily use uh, wax pastel and acrylic and ink and some oil. But I started stone carving probably 17 or 18 years ago. But that, that was just a nice extension to, to painting on flat, on 2D, as you said. Um, and it also just awakens a different part of your body too. You know, being able to use your hands and arms and your, you know, your kind of your whole body to, to get into something. I prefer the sculpture over the painting because it's more of an interactive experience. Hmm. I really don't. I, I, I kind of go through modes in time. Like right now, I'm sculpting a lot, and I finish like I finished uh, about five pieces in the past two weeks. I started them well before, but I, so right now I'm in a carving mode. But I, it's almost like cycle. And what I'm noticing now is that I'm starting to tie the two together. So even though I, I carve, I, I do a form of carving called direct carving. So I just will start with a block or a boulder and I'll just work it until something emerges. And then, uh, and really my painting is like that too, but I'm noticing patterns. And so if I create something in a painting, I'm, I'm working towards replicating that dimensionally in the sculpture or vice versa. Do most of your sculptures have a corresponding painting that kind of goes hand in hand with it? No, not yet. Okay. Part of moving my artistic experience to an artistic career uh -huh. is that I, I have a hunch that, um, like when I've sold things in the past, if I could couple the two, and I really prefer large format. So, you know, imagining a 18 to 24 inch carving that actually pairs with a 60 inch painting. So that's, I haven't done that yet, but that's that's the next stage. Yeah. Well, from here, it looks like the, the piece behind you, it, it has a glow to it. Is there a it light does. inside of that, or is it just the sun peeking through? No, no, that's that's actually the sunshine. Are you talking about the orange one or the kind of the it's yellow? The one, the pointed one. Uh, I've only temporarily mounted that. Uh -huh. So this is, this is actually orange alabaster. So it, the sunlit was backlit, but it's translucent. And if you carve it thin enough, then that light just creates a, a beautiful, wonderful glow. So you can... Yeah. And alabaster is a type of stone? 
It is. It is. So it's a softer stone in comparison with marble, which is harder. The marble, you know, where you see statues and busts and things like that. So this, this is, you know, you're not going to have that translucence. The light is going to permeate. So the alabaster is softer and easier to carve and goes a little bit faster than something that's harder like a marble is. And marble is shinier, right? Or it looks like it has well, a little sheen to it. it it appears that way. There are cone stones that are that are softer and that you could almost even carve with a really sharp knife. But others you require more sophisticated tools. And I use hand tools, so the, you know, chisels and hammers and when I'm working that that alabaster, I really prefer to use what's called a rasp or a file. So it, it's a, a long handle and it has a unique configuration of teeth that will cut the stone in a very fine grained way. This one is um, a maquette, so it's a model, and it's actually calcite. So I don't know if you can see, but it just has a wonderful kind of glow, and you can actually see through that as well. So that has a different texture and a different way to carve it as well. It's almost like, as a painter, when you work uh, maybe on linen versus canvas, but now I exclusively paint on paper. But by moving across the different media, you, you're, you're kind of exploring with a range of different techniques. Right. But for me, carving is like that. By working with different types of stones, you master your tools. Did you have to do research before you just picked up a stone? Did you have to look into it and say, all right, I'm probably going to have to use this tool to get it to get this shape? Or did you just go in head first? I, I, I went in head first and <laughs> made a lot of uh, mistakes, but then I actually started attending uh, an annual workshop. My my daughters call it a sculptor's camp. There are 59 other sculptors from all over the country. And we actually meet in Kansas, which is the site of a primary supplier. So when I buy stone, I'm buying it by hundreds of pounds of stone at a time. So when it's shipped, you know, it all comes in bulk. But we actually go to the place where the person who provides the stone and tools and it was there where I would actually start to improve my techniques significantly because, you know, in community you can learn from each other and you can pick up a tool and wonder, you know, what on earth is that? You know, and how do you use it? And, and it, it's a great way to learn fast. In your submission, you mentioned uh, neo portraiture. Could you elaborate on that a little more? Yeah, sure. Um, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a couple of other artists, uh, Kelsey and Margaret. We were just talking about different kinds of art that we had seen and, and, and it, it really occurred to me that there is a way to start to work with patrons, with clients, with customers, and ask them questions that will help them clarify what's important to them. And it could be their values, it could be uh, the hue, the color, the range of color. So as an artist, if you know good questions to ask, you can actually begin to draw out a much deeper level of co-creation and appreciation and participation from your patron. And so that led to this notion of, well, is there actually a new form of portraiture that's in here? And we started exploring sets of questions. But eventually, I would, I would work my questions toward um, make, helping me make selections that will then influence my my design and the whole idea of neo portraiture then is to 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 engage them in that. So that's that's really where the idea began, and it's continued to build from dialogue with results in artifacts. So you ask about work in progress, and this is this is a piece that I'll finish um, next week. So it, it's. I've been carving it probably for a couple months. It's it's a little bit heavier and taller than the rocks, and it's mounted vertically. And this is uh, alabaster, so it, it was uh, sourced from a quarry in Utah. But I direct carved it, and then I'll just finish the center. And then it'll go through um, the finishing stage, which takes you from about 60 grit up to 3,000 grit. So I'll, I'll finish all that by hand, and it'll end up with more of an appearance like what you saw in that one piece. Well, I really appreciate your
your time and you breaking down your process. It was really interesting. Thank you, and thank you for your service in reaching out to creators. It's it, it's just so welcomed and so important for right now. I appreciate thank it. you. We're happy to do it. Talk again soon. Yes. Take care. Okay. Bye bye.